So a third professional outing here for this exciting heavyweight, Harvey Dykes. Won the NAC Super Heavyweight title a couple of years ago, previously the ABA title. Won by a couple of fellas called Joshua and Fury. So it comes with pedigree. And he's up here against Milos Veletic, whose previous outing at the York Hall ended after 23 seconds against Matty Harris. So this is already a triumph for him. Yeah, but that, he uses the jab well, Dyson. He doesn't rush his work. Has a good look, and then when he gets close, he still can find the, find the range. He can find the space to land those types of uppercuts through the middle. Looking to land that big left hand there, Dykes. Had a couple of fights so far in the spotlight. Debut was live with us last November in Brighton, of course, with so many friends there. Won all four. And then he fought in the Cayman Islands in December against Tyler Tremblett. And here he is in front of another big crowd. It was close to low there from Dykes. But before that was good, he just took a hat. He didn't step back, he just leaned back on the back foot without losing his balance. And then came back with a nice little combination there. Miletic boxes an amateur in the European and Worlds. He comes into the pro game with a good pedigree. It's only his seventh pro fight. Dykes hugely popular, sold over 100 tickets. You can see his fans, they're all across the other side of the ring from us. Come up from New Haven and Brighton. He's boxing well here, Dykes, isn't he? Controlling the space there. A little feints every now and again. Got the faster hands, faster feet, he's making a tell here in this first round. Six rounder here for Harvey Dykes as well. They're looking to get rounds into him as quickly as they can. Trains with Don Charles now and says that his next step is he wants to rent a flat up in London so he can be closer to the gym and really get his work in. Not all glamour, you know. Boxers have to make decisions like that earlier on in their career, and later too, depending on where you are. Gotta make a tell, he throws, he throws the feint and he makes it obvious, and that's not a bad thing. You gotta work off that. A lot of energy to, to make that movement, you gotta make it pay. So you've got to be careful there, Dykes swinging in. He's squaring his feet up a little bit there. Every time he comes back, it's going to be a time to get hit. Some atmosphere in here, Barry, isn't there? Special night this, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, he, he had a really good start there, Doug. So he controlled it very well, using that soft ball jab really effectively. You know, when he was darting into in, in the combinations, he was landing quite well. Just got a little bit scrappy at the end, I thought. But apart from that, I thought that was a good round. You have Don Charles in the corner now will surely keep his keep him nice and calm. Tell him to go back to that good work he did in the first part of the round and expect some more good stuff from him. Just could. Slowly building on your success in every round, don't rush your work. And that's how you build second. a good conclusive win. Check us out to round two. Spent five weeks sparring Daniel Dubois before he fought Alexander Usyk last August. Sparred 54 rounds with Dubois, Harvey Dykes, that's pretty good company to be keeping. That was an interesting night, wasn't it, in Rotslab that we had? Yes. It rained, apparently. We were okay, weren't we? We were under the canopy. Don't know how you got home. It certainly did rain. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely bit of work there from Dykes. Again, utilising that hand speed. with great pressure of course carrying that NAC title win around when you as I did straight away mention the names of Fury and Joshua gonna give him time to develop they're very excited about him his fans from down in Sussex but 
but he's not going to be a fighter who's going to blast through opponent after opponent. Not that kind of heavyweight. No, he's not. So you know, it's, it's very, so the development of him is is more is, is more important, I feel, because you've got to learn how to navigate around the ring. And you're going to go along the rounds with another fighter, so you have to know to break a fighter down, how to negate some of the things they do well, and utilize your strengths. Which from him, you got fast hands. You got to use those. Lost in the NAC final in 2021 to Ike Okbo and then outpointed Gideon Antwi the following year. That shows some spirit as well to bounce back from a disappointment like that. Big Courtney Bennett in that 2021 semi final, and I think he sees them meeting in the pros. Thinks that'd be a good fight. They won't take it this early, but it's something to build towards. Just allowing, just allowing him to come forward there, a little bit Dykes, and unless you're really going to make someone pay for that, you're just inviting trouble a little bit. Get behind that jab. Milos Velotic nearly pulled off what would at the time have been a very big upset against a fighter called Ali Kedin. Had him in desperate trouble in the final moments of round three. Eventually ran out of gas and was stopped in the following round, but Kidd's actually lost two in a row since that, but prospect at the time, not a Dykes level, but it, it shows that Velotic can be dangerous. He's not overall, does he? That's the thing, he's not. Keep giving the opportunity, he'll do the work. But Dykes controlled, he's, he's, again, another round, he's controlled everything. Seconds out to round three. So round three. The scheduled six here, Harvey Dykes in those blue and white trunks uh, against Milos Velotic, the Bosnian. And Harvey Dykes' is fans here in full voice. That was better from Dykes, eh? But when he came forward with the combination, he just slid across to the right. Just so he could get that right hook in the play and then follow him through with the left hand. Back there, Velotic, Amy Hugh, quite rightly, telling him not to. Previously a bin man, Harvey Dykes, and says quite candidly, if it wasn't for boxing, that's what he'd be doing. So he's grateful for every single second in the spotlight. And it's a glorious spotlight here tonight at the York Hall. Already roasting hot, isn't it? Already. I'm not sure what Velotic is trying to do here. Try, trying to lure him on, to maybe for a counter shot, but just allowing Dykes to just comfortably work away with the, with the right hand lead. Not having to do much more. Just a tough man, isn't he, Velotic? Just makes himself quite easy to hit. And of course, when Matty Harris hit him, there was no response, but he feels he's just surviving in there. It's his job, really, to. Give Harvey Dykes rounds and be an opponent. But he could use his, nat his naturally bigger size, his physical you know, presence, just to try and wall Dykes down, put him under a little bit of pressure. See how he responds. I think he would respond better to it, actually. I think that's what he wants, Dykes. The way he moves, the way he throws his shots, he sees how fleet-footed he can be for the big fella. He will one fighters coming at him. Great moment at the weigh-in when Velotic was announced by our announcer Paul Booth. Expecting this 19 and a half stone figure to emerge. One of the super lightweights came out <laughs> from behind a screen to give it comedy value. And someone in the crowd shouted, that's not him. And eventually he found his way, finding his way around the ring here. But Harvey Dykes winning every second of this. Good left hand there from Dykes. 
Yet again, another round where he's shown flashes of really good work here, Dyke. Sometimes slightly untidy, but that's because he's fought here to push the pace. I don't think that's naturally what he likes. Quarter, 10 seconds. Check us out to round four. So moving to the second half of the fight, the first over six rounds for Harvey Dykes. 2-0, and oh, this former NEC super heavyweight champion. And you can hear Harvey, Harvey echoing around the York Hall. And that brings pressure. Remember his debut in Brighton, we were there and the whole of the... Uh, Arena on their feet cheering him on and well you know from experience that's not easy Barry. No it's not, no, and again it's, it's, it, you have to stay composed, I think he did stay composed actually but it's, there's an eagerness to impress at times, especially early in your career and you can start making mistakes. Especially when you're a heavyweight, people might expect fireworks. Well what happens as well, that crowd multiplies very quickly if you're in a heavyweight, you know, work gets around, there's a big guy who's starting to do some good things. And his steam rolls very quickly there, the, the, the support. Good work from Dykes. Just got to watch his exit route, that's all. After he throw, th throws the combinations. Right hand there from Dykes, that was better. He clipped Belatic, a left and then a right. Belatic looked flustered there for the first time. Caught by a couple of shots. Oh, good. caught with a good shot there, Dykes. Took it well, but just a little reminder. Blood from the nose of Belatic. This is where the fate comes in for Dykes. Again, he did that in, in a couple of rounds earlier, just after he throws that last left hand, squares the feet up. He just got tagged there after that. But a heavier shot might cause him a few problems. Amy Q keeps warning Harvey Dykes to using that elbow. It's that straight left hand that caused the bloody nose of Belatic. I didn't think it was possible for Belatic to slow up, but he has done. <laughs> and actually, that, if Dykes throws that jab to the body, and that, that left hand there, but he arc it a little bit more so it goes a little bit higher but go low first jab to the body and whip it right over the top bowl it over the top nose is streaming blood now although after watching tim zoo and sebastian from door i think i have to reset my sights on <laughs> what blood in a boxing ring means Closing moments, the fourth here between Harvey Dykes, who's completely dominant, and Milos Belicic. Second. Second out round four. So penultimate round here between New Haven's Harvey Dykes. Still, as well as uh, putting the Pug London gym on his CV with Don Charles, says he fights out of Whitehawk Boxing. And uh, in Brighton, still proud of those roots. Fighting as well for his twin six-year-old daughters, Kayla and Kyla Harvey Dykes. Saw an interesting quote from him as well after the madness of Wardley against Clark. And he said, my first thought was, get me in the mix. I want to be in fights like that. And then you think boxes are a different breed, aren't they? <laughs> I wasn't one of those. <laughs> Keep me out of the mix, says Jones. I mean, I've been in a fight like that, I said, get me out of here. But when you see magical nights like that, you do want to be involved, they do inspire you to want to get down the gym, get fit, get active. A good straight left hand there for Dykes, he set that up as the Belichick's response slows even more. It's clever from Dodge, really. Just through the jet, the right hand jab a little bit short. And then through the long left hand.
better. He's, he's, he's not busting the gut, which has been slightly busier. A little bit more active. Just keeps a little bit more pressure there on Veletic. And when he lets those combinations go, they look lovely and smooth. Bit of spite on that left hand as well. Look for the right hook, didn't miss by much there. He's heading to Latvia after this to spar Maris Bredis, head of that fight against Jai Opetaya on the uh, Fury Usyk undercard. Looking forward to that. Just got a bit of swelling now with that left eye there, Dykes. And Benetic has found a home on occasion for that right hand. So be careful that doesn't turn into a cut there, a little welt. He's got to have it there when he misses, he just squares that, brings that back foot forward and that's a... Just have it, he's a break I think. That's better. Really good amateur background to bring into the pros. Of course, the modern heavyweight era, you wonder about his size, you wonder about his power. But we'll give him time. Again there from Dykes. He's banging to the body of Velatic. He's better when he just keeps turning, when he slides to the right, when he comes forward. Just keeps sliding to the right. Smile on the face of Belatic. He's very aware that he's the away fighter here. And he's doing that in good spirit. It's one thing, of course, being a, a journeyman, being an opponent, but being that at heavyweight is something else. Comes with much bigger physical risk. Not tonight, maybe, but more often than not for him. And he was just wobbled there, I think. Yeah. Maybe I just lost his balance a bit sliding across the ropes, but something for Dykes to work on, you feel now. Just finish strong. See, I think Dykes in flashes, he's shown some really good work. There's some mistakes, some flaws that he has that he has to tidy up, but that's all part of the, the, these fights are for, these early development fights are for ironing out the mistakes the little bad habits you have, but when he does the work, when he's actually not going to be busy, when he lets the punches go, he looks good. Left hand there from Dykes landed on the chin of Belotic. But it's been a more enjoyable experience for Milos Belotic than last time he fought here when he was stopped so early by Matty Harris. They're on their feet to cheer Harvey home here at the York Hall. But a smile on his face as well. It'll be a points win for Harvey Dykes, who is very much 
a work in progress, but it's an extremely popular one. Final thoughts on that performance, Barry? Yeah, again, I just think, you know, he did some really good work when, he, when he's looking to be busy. He doesn't have to just give the impression he's always going to be busy. So when he goes works behind that fast jab, when he uses his attributes with his speed and movement, he looks a much better fighter. Just stopping in that back foot forward when you throw that down left hand, that's the biggest draw. But apart from that, I think he's doing some really good work. Well, Paul Booth is ready and in position. And we could get to him for what would be a comfortable point win, I would have thought, but Harvey Dyke. Boxing fans are inside. After six rounds of heavyweight boxing, we go to the scorecards at ringside. The bout is scored at 60 points to 54 points in favour of the winner. He's still undefeated from New Haven!